So I know many of you are probably installing people analytics for the first time and you heard great things about the template stories and you want to get one of these up and running so that you can show off to your business. Then you import the template story and you're seeing nothing but errors. Uh, if that is uh, what the boat that you are in, uh, you've come to the right place. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to share the lessons I have learned from getting the template stories uh, up and running in, uh, in, for my clients and the steps involved in doing this in the most efficient way possible. Since you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're probably pretty well versed on what people analytics are and what they are for. But one thing I do want to just point out before we really take a deep dive into getting the template stories up and running is the, the prerequisites before we can even get here. So first, of course, is that we need to have IAS, the Identity Authentication Service from SuccessFactors. That needs to be enabled. That is the front door. You And so getting that in place is half the battle. And then once you do that, then the next two steps are pretty straightforward. One is to enable people analytics within Upgrade Center. And then lastly is synchronizing your, your users from Success factors to people analytics. Uh, the, none of those steps are really covered in this video. I just wanted to call out clearly before you even think about trying to get the template stories up and running, these pre prerequisites need to be met. So what the heck are template stories anyway? They are pre-built analytics for different success factors modules. By my last uh, count, there are 55 of them and they are really, they're, they're very attractive as you can see down there in the bottom right, you can see an example of one and they're really useful just to get up and running, but they also are a template that you can follow for any analytics you want to build in the future. The, the people analytics is really powerful, but it can be a bit intimidating when you first try to get one of these up and, and running on your own and, and to start completely from scratch, I think would be really, really hard. And so these templates are something that you can analyze, see how they do things, and then use them as for future analytics that you want to build out for your business. One thing I have learned the hard way is that story reports don't like missing fields. So story reports will error out if the report is asking for any field that isn't enabled in your system. So if you try to load in one of these delivered reports and you just happen to be missing even one of the fields that the report is calling for, that report is likely to error out. And some of these reports will have, you know, upwards of 20 fields that, that they're using. And in, in, in a lot of cases, maybe we're not using some field that the report is calling for. And all it takes is one and, you know, you can run into an error with this. And it can take a while if you just try to go through trial and error and try to disable fields one of one at a time until these reports get running this can be a bit of a challenge okay so here is the shortcut that i use in order to get the template stories working so number one get the technical specification for the report that you're trying to enable and identify all the fields that the report needs and we'll go through the location of those technical specifications here in a minute Next, for any field that the template story is asking for that is not enabled in your system, just go ahead and enable it. So identify all those fields and enable either through manage business configuration or configure object definition. Just get those fields activated in your next work with the reports until it is rendering successfully. So in addition to enabling the fields, there may be another couple of adjustments that you need to make in order to get really comfortable that the report is, is actually functioning. And then, and then once you have the report actually running, then adjust the report design and get Get rid of those extra fields that you're not using. So if it's a filter that is that that field is is being used for, or or whatever that that extra field is that you've got in a, uh, disabled in your system normally, get rid of that field out of your report design. And then what you will be able to do in step five is just put the put the fields back to disabled the way they were in the first place. 
Okay, as I mentioned on the slide, step one in the process is looking up the technical specification of the of the template store that you want to work with and making sure that you have all of the prerequisites. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you how I navigate to it. And I'm going to show you now the, the link that I use in order to get to this site, the SAP Success Factors HC, HXM Suite. To me, it's the best way to get to the documentation. Then from here, we're going to navigate to People Analytics. From People Analytics, we're going to click on the operate tab and then you're going to scroll down to the bottom of the operate tab and you're going to see something called technical specifications for template stories in people analytics so this is going to take you to a a, a summary list that's going to have all of the different reports that that are available for you one of which that we are about to utilize is as position anal analysis that's the report we're going to load in and so what we're going to see here in a second i after i uh, i'm just scrolling through and showing you a few of the different available reports, but now I'm just going to click on position analysis, and this is going to take us to the spec technical specification. And then from here, it's important that you just read slowly through all of the different elements of the report and you know pick up on what fields are in use so in this case we have things like temporary regular you know business unit division department location and you just want to go through all those and say do we have these in our environment and then i if you identify any that you do not have in your system then just go in and we're going to add them into your environment you go to configure object definition or you go to employment details or excuse me bit manage business configuration and you just add in the fields that you that, that are missing okay Okay, here's what's going to happen. Uh, first, I'm going to import our report that we are going to be working with into a report center. Then I'm going to duplicate the report. Those are two steps that you would normally need to do no matter what. But then what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run the report without making any updates. And the reason I'm doing that is so that you can see what it looks like on a, when a report is in error state. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to follow my advice and I am going to go in and look at the technical specification for the report, make whatever adjustments we need to to the data model, then we're going to rerun the report and show the correction that that takes place once we get the fields enabled that need to be enabled. So that's the that's the process we're going to follow for the rest of this video. So all right, so I'm going to go in, I'm in Report Center. You, as with everything else, you have to make sure that you're permission for all of this. One thing that you'll need to be able to do is import people analytics reports. That's per, a specific permission. You click on import, and then I'm gonna to go to content store. And the report that I want to bring into my system is workforce analysis. So I'm going to choose that one from the list and I'm going to import it. Okay, so after a couple of minutes, our report finished importing into our system. I'm gonna go in, next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go in and I want to create a duplicate version of that report in our namespace. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to click on duplicate. And of course, the next thing we want to do is rename. Okay, so now we have imported the report and we have moved it over into our namespace. Next up, as I, as promised, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what it looks like if I just run this report without making any updates. And it's gonna fail. Ah, pretty much a failure. So this is what you can kind of expect to see the first time you come into a report if you don't do any kind of analysis ahead of time. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and do this the right way, or at least the shortcut way that I have found in order to get the reports to run successfully. So now I'm gonna go back to the list of template stories 
and I am going to look up workforce analysis. Look through here, and then I'm going to scroll down through the report. And I'm going to notice right away, hey, I've got the rest of these fields, but I don't have regular temporary enabled in my system. So that tells me, and just play along and assume that I have checked everything else out and everything else we had. But the one field that we don't have enabled in our system is regular slash temporary. So armed with that information, I now want to enable that field in my environment, regular slash temp on job information. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in. I'm just going to go to manage business configuration. And of course, regular slash temp is stored on job information. So I'm going to go into job information. Okay, and you can see a regular slash temporary, that field is not enabled. So we're going to need to set that to yes. We want that field enabled. Okay, so we now have that field enabled and eventually the report would start working again um, or would start working, but the one problem that we would run into right now is the People Analytics actually uses the OData interface in order to make all the connections back and forth. And the OData interface doesn't automatically update when we make field definitions. So if you've worked much with success factors, you know that in order to make sure that anything having to do with OData is up to date, we want to make sure that we go to OData refresh. So we're going to go to OData API metadata refresh and export. And then we are going to refresh our cache. All right, so our API is for OData is refreshed. This lets the report know that this field has been enabled. Now we're gonna go back to reporting. Okay, so now let's go in to our report again. And so you can see here, I'm gonna to go to workforce analysis. Okay, so you can see that we our, our results are much better this time. Now, you'll notice that the ratio of temporary workers, that's not producing any results, and that, that's to be expected. And there are there may be a few others that you need to work through. And there's a, you know, this is going to be where the work's gonna come in, and you're gonna need to come in and start working around and playing with some of these analytics. And so that's that's probably the subject of another video. But for now, I just wanted to show you that if you want to get a long way towards getting these reports up and running, then the first thing you should do is enable your uh, your field. But hopefully you can see the value in just going in and, and reading those uh, technical specs up front and adding the fields in so that uh, this process is a lot less painful. Thanks. 